He may never say so himself, but John Oliver is a force to be reckoned with, and he has made important changes in the world already. So much so, they have given the effect a name. But can comedy be news? What did John Oliver help change? And why is he now calling out blue bloods? You'll find out in this video. First up, can comedy be news? These days, having someone tell you the news in a more engaging way is probably the way most of us prefer it. Most people will receive some of their news directly from a professional comedian rather than a journalist. And in most of those cases, the comedian is also making a decent effort to be informative and politically engaged, and not just trying to be funny. Comedians like that have been for a while now, and at the moment, John Oliver is one of the most informative, entertaining ones out there. Last Week Tonight could easily be mistaken for investigative journalism, though he probably wouldn't want to go that far as to praising himself, because he did do a lot of things that were much more than funny, lightly rebellious pranks. Whether he likes it or not, the result of his show stands out so much has been deemed the John Oliver effect. His strange mix of reporting on news that is important, banter, and action when needed has actually made change happen in the world. Even if Oliver keeps insisting that he's not a journalist, he can't deny that his show definitely engages in journalism. Who legally founded and incorporates a church just to make the point how easy it is to receive tax-exempt status in the U.S.? That's more than a joke, and also much more authentic than normal news. Maybe that's why a lot of people prefer to follow the news like that these days. Next, how John Oliver actually changed the world. There are quite a few segments from last week tonight that have made real-world change happen, and that's because he does just that little bit more than a simple comedian or a journalist would. He makes sure he has the proof or the science to prove his point, and it's hard to ignore his message after that, which is why the women of Women Engineers got $25,000 in donations in the two days after he uncovered that the Miss America pageant's claim of giving out $45 million in scholarships each year is just not true. He had offered the the other organization as more ethical, and people actually listened and donated to the seemingly better organization. Oliver also isn't afraid to tackle class problems, which he proved once more when he brought up how bail procedures keep poor Americans behind bars before they're even convicted of a crime. This often leads to them to play guilty just to get out. Not long after the segment, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio came out with a plan to alter the city's requirements for low-level offenders. Oliver was never given credit, but fans couldn't help but notice the coincidence incidents and insists that the segment has resulted in at least one city. And now, why John Oliver slammed Amazon for their trucker treatment. We've grown used to being able to order things online and have them delivered the next day, sometimes even on the same day, so much so that we might not realize that actual people bring those things to you, hardworking people who don't get enough credit and not enough protection, which is apparently why we have to hear about it from John Oliver. He unraveled why there is a shortage of truck drivers, or rather a driver retention problem. It's hard work. And truckers are almost being taken for granted. Them being paid by the mile, not the hours of work done, seems a little unfair. But worst of all, the major corporations that rely on deliveries, like Amazon and FedEx, classify their truckers as independent contractors, or delivery service partners, instead of actual employees, effectively scrubbing their hands from any liability. All the costs of maintenance and truck ownership also falls on the shoulders of the driver, making the job less and less attractive. Maybe the companies are to be able to deal with all those cases, but some Something does feel off about the whole thing, and Oliver rightly tells us that we should all care more about truckers and how they're being treated. We all rely on them after all. Don't go anywhere just yet. Next up, John Oliver had something to say about O.J. Simpson chiming in on the Oscar slap and why he's calling out Blue Bloods. Stay tuned. Let's talk about how John Oliver shut down O.J. Simpson's comment about the Oscar slap. The Oscar slap isn't something that we're going to be done talking about anytime soon, not only because there continues to be a huge amount of media attention on it, but because we've all got something to say about it. But John Oliver pointed out that there is in fact one person absolutely no one wants to hear about on this matter, and that is O.J. Simpson. Simpson posted a video of himself taken with a selfie camera, sunglasses, and all. In it, he acknowledges that he thinks it's unfortunate, but that Will Smith was wrong. Despite that, Simpson declared he understood the feeling. And who was asking? Which is exactly what Oliver said as well. Nope, not you, O.J. No one wants to hear from you on this. Simpson may have gotten out on parole in 2017 following an armed robbery case. It doesn't look like he should be saying much about the sad case of Will Smith. Luckily, he had Oliver to perfectly summarize how Simpson might look to the rest of the world. Next, how does John Oliver feel about his platform himself? Last Week Tonight is no longer the new sensation, but a known and admired property. Already renewed for 2023, we've had more than enough time to understand that John 
Oliver is a comedic genius whose words bring true change in the world. But how does he feel about that himself? He opened up about it in an interview with IndieWire. Oliver said he feels very privileged that, so far, people have been willing to listen to him talk about subjects that may seem very dry on the surface, and he's allowed to bring them in in a way so that we can all digest it a little better. Even though he would never admit himself to be a journalist, he puts a lot of work into his stories and has a whole team working on the stories with him. Amongst those are researchers and journalists. Oliver says he's lucky to have an audience that allows him to talk about all sorts of important subjects and trusts him to choose stories that have weight to them, even if it doesn't always look like it from the outset. He did note that the pandemic has made it harder to gauge how the segments would land because he has lost the ability to first read it out to the team in person and not through a screen. He misses the feedback that an audience offers, saying that it does make a difference. Hopefully, he'll have a full studio soon enough. And now, why John Oliver is calling out Blue Bloods. Not all cases John Oliver makes us aware of are about corruption and major corporations. He isn't afraid to throw a light on many other prominent sociological or political problems around the world, like the recent episode that focused on why drug overdoses are going up in the United States. He does an excellent job breaking down why this is, and links the phenomenon to the rise of fentanyl in the streets, at which point he also criticized the media's portrayal of the drug, which led him to take direct hits at one of CBS's most popular crime dramas, Blue Bloods. In one of their episodes, they portrayed fentanyl in a dangerous and irresponsible way which perpetuates a myth that is absolutely false. Oliver explained that continuing to make people believe even the slightest exposure to the drug can lead to an overdose is fear-mongering that encourages to not help someone that is overdosing. Oliver also pointed out that the myth is currently also being maintained by the police around the United States. It has even led some people being convicted of assault just for having fentanyl in their possession. Oliver wasn't too surprised a show like Blue Bloods hadn't done their homework properly and likened the show to an adult Paw Patrol. Oliver still ended the segment with his usual call to action, and there's a lot that needs to change in the U.S. Overdose prevention medication should be available without a prescription, and drug testing equipment shouldn't be illegal. Endorse harm reduction centers. Not too much to ask, right? Let's see how long it takes before the John Oliver effect takes hold. That's it. Do you think O.J. Simpson should chime in on the Oscar slap discussion? Do you think shows like Blue Bloods should be called out more often? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.